New Zealand made plenty of changes, only one not to get on the court. So underway in semi-final one. And it's New Zealand in the black to your left of screen. Jamaica after their win over Australia by two in the yellow. And Whitney Soonis, Gina Crampton, the mid-court. Well, you can already see plenty of movement inside the circle. Wilson is not prepared. That's a massive miss early, though. Nerves, you put it down to that. And the rebound going to the Jamaicans. So transition, Williams up quite high. She'll look to get down a bit further. Well, this is where Jamaica could tire quickly if this defensive pressure is just constant through the middle here for New Zealand. They struggled in transition early against the Diamonds and lost a few early. But look at the patience they're showing here. They're in no hurry. Possession netball. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to get there. Contact Late win. challenge from Heffernan. So a chance to pause, release the pressure. The offload to Fowler. And the first goal of the game goes to Jamaica off a centre pass of New Zealand. Break, and here's the miss, and look at the two Jamaicans, Wilson and Sterling, up for that rebound. Able to keep him play off the one foot. Oh, she thought about it, Beckford, and probably should have. No, oh, fouling. Fowler, apologies. She just turned a terrible pass into something, didn't she? Here's the keeping in the ball. There's that ball again, but Sterling is so preoccupied with Wilson. We just see a turnover happen, so it's an offensive contact, as I said. She's been smart using her body, so that's one that's gone against her. Obviously a little bit too rough, according to Josh Bowring. Oh, well, clever stuff by Fitzpatrick. Came out hunting enough to shake the shot, or the pass, should I say, over the back line. Silver Ferns, the nerves are gone. Gina Crampton, Karaka to the line. Contact centre. Beside. Nice and short again. New Zealand prepared to do the work outside the circle to get a little bit closer and then have a look at the body work again. Ball placement, that was the issue on that one. Hold well on, Sterling, though, to get to it as she wipes the floor. Have a look at the contest. The ball needed to be on this side of Wilson. I just laugh. She's always got a smile on her face. Always. Enjoys it. Yep. Needs to watch her footwork here. It's a little uh, susceptible, well, but anyhow. Look at the defence from New Zealand, though, really clogging that space. They play that little zone through the middle. And really, a clearance ball is what's going to beat it. Exactly what Jamaica just did. So Beckford, eyes off, her second at the post. Doesn't look like missing when she gets it. It's interesting that she tends to offload so often. Well, it's probably just habit. I would too if Janelle was standing yeah. there. <laughs> I was going to say, good choice. So they break back here at Jamaica. 7-4, halfway through this opening quarter. Semi-final action, the winner through to the grand final and we'll meet the winner of this evening's game, Australia, taking on England. Have a look at the New Zealand defence end, standing off the body a little, kind of confused the space. Smart road to take as well. Just see what works on foul and stick with it. Hollywood Magpies defender. Oh, way too much space. The opportunity missed, but... Because it's Janelle Fowler, it can still go in a little later. I'll tell you what, you cannot underestimate. Well, not her. The other one, Janelle Fowler. Extraordinary, isn't she? What she has done for netball in Jamaica. A wayward ball again for the Silver Ferns. Shamira Sterling, the young up-and-comer. Superstars at either end of the court. Yeah, well held. Smart work from Wilson. Look how quickly now undefended Jamaica have got themselves down the circle and it's Beckford doing the damage. Whitney Soonis has had a terrific tournament for my liking to date, but she's getting absolutely a lesson taught to her by Dixon Rochester at the moment in the middle for Jamaica. Yeah, just been completely left behind, isn't she? And you cannot afford to do that. Can't overrun the first ball and then be burnt on the second phase. Options are plenty. 
for the Sunshine Girls. Beckford, Williams on circle edge, always sights Fowler. Oh, even Miles off the circle takes the step into two defenders, pulls the penalty. Smart work by Janelle Fowler. So Fowler ticking along beautifully. 100% and 12 straight. Oh, Wilson nearly a tip. Last 40 seconds to play here. The Silver Ferns need to convert and it's not going to happen. Look at the Jamaican bench in the background. They've got 45 minutes to still get excited. They're going early. 17-9 the score. Why wouldn't you? Different sort of patience here than it was against Australia. They found themselves down by six in that game. At the moment, they don't look like they're giving up on this patient game plan. Fitzpatrick, the job on Fowler, and it just opens up Beckford. That's not smart at all. Beckford will burn you if you leave her alone, just like that. Here's the work from Jodie Ann Ward, and it's the crumbs through Shamira Sterling at goalkeeper. There he is, Rob Wright, he likes it. So there you go, the first quarter is down, siren goes, and Jamaica looking very good early as they go to the break, 18 to nine. Jamaica with their foot down early, leading 18 to nine, and look absolutely in control early. And again, straight through the middle corridor, Beckford. And Janelle Fowler, she's shot 12 straight in the first and opens up with an easy one in the second. Great work, Crampton, to get herself out on that centre pass and the quick double to get right on the circle edge. So she's right in amongst every part of that play on that centre pass for the Silver Ferns. Love the fake she used then just to draw the two defenders backwards, opening Selby Rickett at the front. Well, there she is, Crampton. You can see, takes it right down on that circle edge there. That was one of New Zealand's best passages of play. Finding obstruction, we attack. So the, they played each other. The Barney's last time at a major was in 2018. It was for the bronze medal. Goal attack come up. And Jamaica came through with the goods. 60 to 55. They want to go one better Contact though. Winner of this up. into the gold medal game Contact tomorrow night. Keeper, hip. Beside the keeper. Well, Fitzpatrick just going for a contact umpire calling it was a hip, pushing out, trying it? to stop Fowler from dropping back. No, no Jane Watson, no Katrina Rory and no Karen Berger for this tournament. So they are certainly down on experience defensively, the Silver Ferns. They have to go to a one-on-one -on -one then, don't they? It's just this off-the-body zone that's just not working for them at the moment. They've got to mix it up. It's just not their bread and butter though, is it? That's where Australia was winning ball back. It was the pressure, the contest on every pass. 28-17, seven minutes to play in the second. 10-8 this quarter. So New Zealand have been able to hold Jamaica for a longer period here. After going down nine in the first. Nothing contested. Three balls. Jamaica didn't have a body on them. Still none. All too late Both to leave the contest until the last moment. But because no one's coming out to have a fly for the ball. So theoretically, the defensive game plan isn't being seen out to its best No, so it's got to change. That's it. Pull the pin on it. Move on to something else. You can't continue with this. When the scoreline's heading the direction it is, it's now 8-11 in this quarter. A lot closer than the first, sure. But Jamaica still etching away. They're doing exactly what they came here to do, Jamaica. They've played smart possession netball. Their defenders do what they do best. Going out flying for the ball, Bromwyn Adams. Clearly indicating where the penalty needs to be set. Yeah, smart pass around the body then. Well held again from Wilson. I reckon they need a goal attack that moves. I know Mez is only sitting on 57% shooting for the tournament, but I feel like they need that playmaker in that circle, just bringing the cuts and drives and allowing the shooter to open up a bit more. New Zealand. Dame Nolene Tarua has spoken a number of times throughout this tournament, knowing anything is possible as long as you get to this game, but understands also they are on a building phase possibly eyeing Netball World Cup as the bigger opportunity. Hopefully a few players back for the Ferns. 
all too still. Too still here up this attack line. Oh, that's, Maya Wilson, look, lovely front hold. That's what's got to happen, though, mm. because that's the only thing available. Too much pressure on that one game plan. Great vision from Gina Crampton to get past the mess. We attack. Kayla Johnson, well, there's the experience straight away. Ball in hand and right down on the oh, transfer. Oh, gee, and then not so experienced. Sorry to cut you off, Catherine Cox, but not what the Silver Ferns wanted. Yeah, smart work there, just allowing Beckford a little bit closer. Look at the lean over the hand, though. Jury did everything right until she touched the ball. Johnson, cross court, and Jodie Ann Ward right there. That needed just to be pulled in strongly, and I feel like when you're playing against Jamaica, and there's another one in another moment, if your hands aren't going to be strong and pull the ball in, you are gone for all money. Well, look at that. The tip to the goal within two seconds of play. And it's Jodie Ann Ward again igniting it. She spends a lot of her time at goal defence with the Collingwood Magpies. I'd sign her any day of the week as a wing defence. I'd just sign her any day of the week. Yeah. She, I, I've just been so impressed with what she's done at this tournament. There's the issue with the double defence on Fowler. Beckford just ended up right under the post undefended. So again, the Jamaicans put their foot down and they can push score lines out ever so quickly from 15 to 13, now 18-13 in this quarter. Crampton, they look hesitant, they look nervous, the Silver Ferns. Need to get on with it though. It's inside the circle. Just back towards the line. Oh gee. For me, listen to where the umpire's indicating. Get the ball and get moving. So the siren goes here at half time and it is semi-final one and G, Jamaica, they can taste the gold even though they're not in the game yet. Walking off with their shoulders back, aren't they? The scoreline 36 to 22, 218 gold quarters. And some changes, Kath, for the Silver Ferns. Yeah, Grace Nowecki has come on at goal shooter, which means Selby Rickett out to goal attack. And Shannon Saunders in at wing attack. So she will bring a lot more pace. She'll bring some fresh legs. She's been sitting watching the game. She'll recognise exactly what needs to happen in that attack line. And the no changes made in defence for the Ferns. Well, we were interested to see whether there would be or whether some of those changes come throughout this second half. And if they don't, and Jamaica go on to play in a gold medal game and fall short, will we beg the question over fatigue? Because it's a big ask to go three Jamaica. games in four days with the same seven. Yeah, she might be just looking for another solid quarter here. Connie Francis, the coach of Jamaica, and then some changes to come. Deja Williams, wing attack for Jamaica now with ball in hand, just hitting the deck. We should say she did spend 15 minutes on the side against Australia the third quarter and came back on and was brilliant. Well, that defensive play was one of the few highlights we've seen from New Zealand in that regard, but they couldn't end up with the crumbs. Great reach from Jury. That's as tough as Fowl has had it so far this game. Here's the ball over the top to... So many options here, Jamaica. I don't really know who to give the ball to. Looking at every single one. Wilson and Jodie Ann Ward have done an enormous amount of work, though, in the back of play. So not only are they having to turn ball over, but they are being expected to do a huge amount of possession work for Jamaica. Well, that pass was made even easier to Fowler because there was a little screen set out the front from Beckford. Oh, oh yeah. Jamaica. That's a defensive pressure coming from the attackers. It's the attacking work coming from the defenders. Jamaica is doing everything right. Well, they are a class above here, Jamaica. And I think there'll be a lot of people watching this game right now and actually believing they're capable of going on for gold. They probably started thinking that when they beat Australia by two as a Dean Wilson. This quarter, Shamira who? She has gone. Yep. 
completely quiet. Just, again, you know, could Nowicki have come on a little bit earlier after looking at the court for 15 from the side? You wonder. Oh, oh gee. Well, Jodie Ann Ward, another start to her Green name. Play. Shimona Nelson, Adeem Wilson, watching on. Funny wing defence obstruction. And again, Nowicki. So that's the third time in a row she's been able to... New Zealand. Take the ball over the top of Sterling. So a little run of goals here for New Zealand. Oh, Saunders again. Four in a row. Well, where was this earlier, Catherine Cox? Well, it's the confidence because Sterling hasn't been in this contest in this quarter. That's when the confidence starts to build. There were so many tips coming through Sterling and through Wilson in the opening half that they started to freeze on the feed. There's a different confidence out there now for the midcourt for New Zealand. Well, it's the defence now that needs to get a hand to ball. And just maybe put this Jamaican attack under some sort of pressure. I feel like they've been able to do what they want, really, for this entire game so far. Just a minute, just over a minute, should I say, to play. Saunders has been the difference, hasn't she? Getting them back in with the connection to Nuweki. Yeah, the movement out the front had to come, and it has. Oh, but again, it's just the execution yeah, on a couple of passes. It's stagnant. There's no movement from the midcourt, no angles. Hard and then this, again, where's the defence? No defence all the way down the court. It is just way too easy for Jamaica. <laughs> they watch like fans, that don't they? Yet they're teammates, the Jamaicans. It's great. Last 20 seconds, so plenty of time for Jamaica to score if they want to consume the clock. Because they know they can go the quick one to Fowler. Otherwise, they get it in and force New Zealand's centre pass. Which could happen here. No, it won't. So a penalty for Fowler. It'll be just prior to the siren here at three-quarter time. And the Jamaicans win the third quarter as well. They've won all three and they'll go to the final break staring down the barrel of their first ever gold medal match tomorrow. Jamaica, 52 over New Zealand, 35. Into the gold medal game, and they'll take on the winner of this evening's game against Australia and England. It is Jamaica's to lose in a commanding position here, 52 to 35. And no changes at all for Jamaica, and you would expect none for New Zealand. Well, that's the first one to go against Nowicki, though, in that one-on-one. -on -one. We just talked about Shamira Sterling being quiet in that third quarter. That's a win early. How did New Zealand respond to that, though? Well, Jamaica had a, their best quarter and the only quarter they won against Australia in the last quarter, cast. So they came home at a rate of knots, just like that one from Khadijah Williams into Fowler, 17 to Jamaica. 9. Well, they had to, didn't they? Because they were down going into that quarter. Different story here. So how will Contact, they play it? Defense. Will they want to put the foot down and really control this game and demand a solid win? Or are they happy just to get themselves through it safely? Obstruction. Contact, goalkeeper. Great contest from Jury. The contact to Fowler. New Zealand. Neil Fowler. Hasn't missed a goal yet. 44 goals for her. Absolutely gobsmacked. There's been no changes, though. Soonest. Well, yeah, that was ambitious. There was no space for that pass, and Dixon Rochester straight onto it. Oh, too easy for Jamaica. Are we looking at a gold medal team? <laughs> Number two. Very few mistakes made from Jamaica. Oh, good ball from Sunis. Just a little glimpse of what that lady's capable of. Jamaica. Well, there you go. Break, go we bench. have been Contact, begging the question and we're about to get the response. Katie Ann Dehaney bibbed up. Shimona Nelson also bibbed up ready to go. Attack. So a couple of changes. That's they're going to put very late, isn't well, it? They're going to put the superstars on the bench. Might have had them there just after half time, maybe at the 35 minute mark. Rest up for the big one. 
Yeah, take your seven minutes and have a good rest. New yeah. <laughs> so we'll wait for injury time to be called as Dixon Rochester <laughs> takes another intercept. Well, I think she heard us say that if we had to pick a player of the match, it would be Jodie Ann Ward. Doesn't like that. Prove us wrong here. Three games, three intercepts, two deflections Massive. to the centre. Massive. That wins gold medals for you. And it pumps the world number twos by a Injury massive margin as well. 22 Long goals time, the difference. So the big girls in Sterling and Fowler go to the bench. And Katie Ann Dehaney from the Sunshine Coast line. He comes on as does Shimona Nelson, the Collingwood Magpies target at the front. <laughs> or oh, your favourite too, I think, Long straight time, into the defense. middle. Adeen Thomas. Yeah, the there she is, oh. wing attack. Beckford, just keep your eye on the goal attack, Jamaica. She's just taken a little knock on the leg. Was very ginger as she ran in. So Adeen Thomas into wing attack. Finding obstruction, goal attack. I feel they could have also brought Rebecca Robinson on in at goal attack and given Beckford a rest. Well, Katie Ann Dehaney, one of the best in-plat players in the Suncorp Super Netball. And, and she wanted to get in there and get some ball too. New Zealand. So a great little win for Jury. The middle Party being direct from Jamaica defense. and another one. Well, the connection coming now as... The bench players have come onto the court. <laughs> you can't help but get excited, can you, no. for this Jamaican side? We know so many of them from playing out here in Australia, a Suncorp Super Netball. Well, at this point, I just want a camera on that. The result is going to be, without question, Jamaica, Jamaica into their first gold medal match. Breaking goal attack. You can imagine all of Jamaica back home will be on their feet. Families, friends, fans, the public. Just over a minute to play. It's been impressive, hasn't it? Yes. They were nine goals up at the first quarter, Kath. They put their foot down. They set their intentions from the get-go in this game. Built beautifully across this contest too, haven't they? It was nine, then 14, then 17. So 15 all it is in this last quarter. It'll be a little battle here for New Zealand to try and win the quarter. For Jamaica though, they are just 27 seconds away from the biggest moment in their Commonwealth Games history. Tanya Wilson still Body flying, plenty of energy attack. to burn. Contact, goal defence. Gosh, their games, they've had three bronze, a fifth, two fourths. And, and in 2018, where they were, beat the Silver Ferns to take the bronze. But off the back of this last shot, Jamaica create history once again here at the Games. And they step in to the gold medal game tomorrow night for the first time in their history. What a monumental moment for the Sunshine Girls. Their captain, Janelle Fowler, at her fourth Commonwealth Games. They owned this game from start to finish. 67 to 51, the final result. And Jamaica, the first team through to the final.